Hello, Tommy again. In this video, I want to talk about a compound cut, which is you cut, which means you cut from one side uh, and then you flip it over and cut from the other side. So you get a 3D, Im 3D image out of this uh, block of wood. Uh, this pattern calls for a one inch by one inch block of wood. This is supposed to be a Christmas tree ornament. Uh, since I didn't have any one inch wood, I took three pieces of one quarter inch uh, walnut and layered them, glued them together with uh, with uh, wood glue. And then I kind of used my uh, hand plane there to knock the glue off the sides and trimmed it up with a table saw slightly and then put it on a sander so to have a smooth, uh, nice piece of wood. And it kind of looks like a single block and it's going to work just as well. Uh, what you could do, so these are all out of the same board, you could uh, get different colors of wood to put together like that and different uh, variations and and make a different effect in the finished product but I'm going to make this as simple as I can and we're going to uh, uh, just cut this, this straight walnut. You can see this one's a little lighter than the others so we'll have a little bit of an effect there. But that's not really what I was after. I just wanted to get a block of wood. So as you can see the pattern comes in two pieces. I've already folded it right on that line and I'm going to mount it just like that. But first let me get some tape on it and then I'll show you how that looks. Okay, so I put some a little tape on the blue tape on the piece then I glued uh, the pattern to that. You can see how it covers two sides. Then I covered that with my clear tape that I like to do. And these are all internal cuts. You have to drill both sides. There's three cuts per side uh, so I drilled these three and then I drilled these three. I used a little smaller drill here because it's kind of a small area to put this big a hole in. It kind of raises the edge. You can mess up your pattern. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a number five skip tooth blade in my saw. This is a little thicker than what I normally cut so I'll make sure I got a skip tooth. Might even go with a seven but I'm going to stick with a five. And so what you do is you cut one side you leave all the pieces in there and put a little tape on it. I got some three quarter inch tape when I get to that point. I'm going to go around it, what I've already cut and then flip it over and cut the other side. So let's get over the scroll saw and give that a shot. So here we are. I've already inserted the blade, changed the blade and inserted it, checked it for straightness. Uh, and try to make these in one cut. You don't cut them up in pieces. You want these pieces to be a solid piece when you get through with them so you can slide them back in and keep them taped in to flip over and cut the other side. I've also slowed the saw down because it's a thicker wood. It's not a real soft wood, but it's not real hard either. I've got a skip tooth blade. I believe it's actually a seven. It was in my five bin, but it looks like it's a seven. But I'm going to try to cut with it and see how we go. That's the first cut. I'll go ahead and cut the other two pieces and we'll cut the outside. I'll, I'll come back after I do that so we won't have to film the whole thing. So here's the next critical step. I've cut these three in and I just went and took that one all the way out. 
I've cut these two pieces. I've cut all the way around. I've made. I've come from the end, right there. Instead of using a, a drill hole, I just came from the outside, made then an external cut. So these pieces will all slide out now independently. But we're only halfway through cutting. We need those to stay in place. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this tape and I'm going to go around it on this side to make sure it stays in place uh, so I can cut the other side. So let me do that and we'll look at it. All right, so there I've gone around it. I've put two layers so I can cover all the way to, to the, both edges. And so now we can treat this like one solid block of wood to cut this side. And one thing I did do uh, on, the, uh, on the first cuts here is I switched blades between these two holes because uh, that one was just too aggressive and it was a reverse tooth so it was grabbing the bottom and it was making it really difficult to hold down. So I finished it with a number five skip tooth, also a reverse tooth. It's best not to use a reverse tooth on something like this because it's harder to control and you don't really need it because your cuts are all, the things, the pieces you're cutting are all going to be inside. You're not going to have to worry about the fuzzies on it. But I didn't have any non-reverse tooth. That's almost what I use exclusively. Um, I have to get me some different ones to do any more compound cuts, but this worked fine. Plus, I also said that I slowed down. The main reason I slowed the, the uh, saw down is this is fairly thick, and it's uh, you have to stay with it to cut through it. It's not an easy cut, and you can generate some heat if you don't because it's, it's an inch thick. Uh, you can generate some heat and start burning the wood. And you can tell by the smell if it starts getting hot. Uh, so I slowed down and not only the, the speed of the, of the saw up and down, but uh, the for forward cutting. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take this back over to the scroll saw. And I'm going to go through there and then make these three cuts and then make the external cut. And then I'll bring it back over here and we'll look at it and take it apart. So a couple of points I wanted to make here at the scroll saw. Uh, something I didn't talk about. When you drill something this thick, sometimes it'll push out the wood at the bottom. And the problem is it'll give you a surface that it'll want to rock on on top of the, uh, the table there. So you may have to kind of, uh, uh, I used a little cutter and kind of cut some of that off so it dried smooth on the uh, tabletop. Now I've already made this one cut I did find me a non-reverse tooth blade thing is it's a three but it's it's cutting okay and I'm going to continue with it I just got one more internal cut and the external cut uh, also want to make sure tell you to make sure when you insert your uh, your pieces in in the first side that you can get them lined up otherwise this hole won't line up in that internal piece that's what I did here I just took it over to the drill press and re-drilled it it's not a big deal here we go, I'm going to cut this last internal cut right here. And these pieces already won't come out. Let me just get that out of the way. What you got to be careful with that is they want to try to slide out and, and hang on the hole that you, your blade's coming through in the tabletop, which can be a problem sometimes. Let's tighten this down, cut this one out real quick. Cut that 
external cutout and then we'll take it over to the uh, table and take a look at it. Okay, so I got all the cuts made. We're going to try to slip it out of there now. See if we can. All in one piece. Got that to come off. Just slide it right on out. Pull your internal sections out of it. There's several pieces there that have to come out. And there you go. The only only advice I'd have is on this on the top pieces of the little things like this, cheat on the outside of the line because those are very delicate. It'd be very easy to break, get them too thin. But there is a compound cut. That's you cut from both directions, get a 3D image. And you can see what I'm talking about if you had layered that with different uh, colored woods. You can get a, a different effect there if you wanted to. Now this, this wood doesn't cut as nice as some. This is uh, walnut. If you cut out of a harder wood like rosewood, it'll, it'll cut out shiny. It'll be very much nicer, but this is okay too. Uh, I kind of like it, a nice smooth shiny cut on, on an item like this, but this is the wood I had available, so that's what I used. Uh, I've got another lesson coming up. Uh, possibly may do something about stack cutting. We'll see if I can find a simple stack cutting pattern. Uh, but we're coming to the end of the, the basic stuff I want to cover. I'm only doing some projects. Uh, try to show you do some projects without a pattern or, or how to create your own pattern. So anyway, if this is helpful to you, uh, please hit that like button there. And if you have a comment or a question, please post it down there and I'll respond to you. And hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. And uh, we're going to move forward with some different types of projects. So I hope you enjoyed that and thanks for watching.